I'm really excited to have the opportunity to share with you the uses of the robotic platform in gynecologic surgery, gynecologic cancer surgery. Um, I only worked with Ken for six months. I got here six months um, uh, before COVID and um, it was a lovely six months, but I can tell you his legacy lives on and every single time we do a ro robotic case, his presence is definitely noted. So as we've heard already from Dr. Park, minimally invasive techniques have revolutionized gynecologic surgery. Uh, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology recommends minimally invasive approach um, for gynecologic surgery whenever feasible. It's been recommended for decades at this point. One prime example is when it comes to hysterectomy. How many people in this room know someone who's had a hysterectomy by show of hands? It's almost 100% of the room. I'm sure you've heard stories of a giant up and down incision, patient in the hospital for weeks, uh, so much pain, couldn't move, couldn't do anything. Um, and that's really not the case, and I'm hoping to, to prove that to you. Um, we have slowly started integrating the robotic uh, platform for almost the majority of our hysterectomies um, and uh, definitely offer it to patients when feasible. So I will not belabor this point. 100% uh, of the people who have spoken before me have touched on this. There are many benefits to robotic surgery. For the patient, there's less pain, there's fewer complications, there's reduced blood loss, shorter hospital stay. I will say that almost over 90%, almost 100% of our patients go home the same day as their robotic procedures. It's very rare that a patient would need to stay overnight and that's only if we need to monitor them or if the pain is um, not adequate, but most patients go home same day, which is a huge difference. Um, and so that's obviously a shorter hospital stay than traditional open hysterectomy. The, this, all of that, the decreased hospitalization and um, operative time translates directly into lower cost. There's also lower risk of infection, faster recovery, and less scarring. In addition to the benefits to the patient, there's obviously, um, as we've heard, benefits for the surgeon as well. As you've seen in all the surgical videos we've shared, there's improved visualization, better surgical com uh, control and precision. Um, there's tremor reduction, um, which is really great if you've had too much caffeine for the day. Um, there's better surgical dexterity, and there's easier and faster suturing. Um, and I, I believe someone mentioned this before, but it's ergonomically better for the surgeon as well. We get to sit during uh, the majority of the key points of the procedure. So switching gears, um, when it comes to gynecologic cancer, endometrial cancer is the most common gynecologic malignancy in the United States. The American Cancer Society estimates that in 2023, there will be an estimated uh, 66,000 new cases of endometrial cancer. It is the fourth most common cancer in women, and it's one of the only cancers uh, that the incidence is going up. So, you know, we have all this wonderful technology and clinical trials, and new uh, cancer treatments um, and prevention strategies coming up, but endometrial cancer incidence continues to go up. And Dr. Levine mentioned this earlier this morning. Um, this is directly linked with the increased rates of obesity that we're seeing um, all throughout uh, developed nations. The cornerstone for most endometrial cancer treatment will be surgery. So. Um, we usually talk to patients about a surgery as the first step in their endometrial cancer um, care. That's A, to remove the cancer, B, it's to figure out what stage the cancer is, and the third goal is um, to figure out what additional treatment they might need after the surgery, such as chemotherapy or radiation. The surgery we recommend usually includes removal of the uterus, a, a hysterectomy with uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes and ovaries, and the traditional staging for an endometrial cancer will involve removal of lymph nodes as well. The, um, we usually, historically, we remove all the lymph nodes in the area that the um, uh, endometrial cancer could theoretically metastasize to. But now at NYU um, Long Island, it's become our standard of care that we are doing um, what's called a sentinel lymph node biopsy. So what is a sentinel lymph node? A sentinel lymph node is the first lymph node into which a tumor will drain. So if the tumor in the uterus is to spread into the lymphatic system, it would be the first lymph node that it touches in that situation. 
identification of the sentinel lymph node involves um, injecting a dye at the beginning of the surgery into um, the, the uterus, the cervix, and then giving that dye time to travel to those lymph nodes. Um, and then with the specialized technology that we discussed um, many times already today, the, the in near-infrared camera called Firefly, which is built into every robotic platform that we have at NYU Long Island, um, we're able to identify this dye. It shows up as this fluorescent, fluorescent green uh, thing we're seeing here. Um, then uh, the sentinel lymph nodes are removed and analyzed for cancer by the pathologist. So what is the benefit of a sentinel lymph node versus the traditional full lymph node removal or lymphadenectomy? Um, well, for one, it's sentinel lymph node biopsy leaves all the functional lymph nodes intact. So you're leaving more um, lymph nodes in the body. Lymph nodes are important because they're what help drain toxins from the body. They um, have white blood cells that help the body fight infection. So we want to maintain as many lymph nodes as possible if feasible, if safe. As you can imagine as well, we're, if you're only removing one lymph node versus many lymph nodes, it's decreased length of surgery. Decreased length of surgery usually translates into um, better, uh, a lower risk of complications for the patient and safer for the patient. There are also um, decreased risk of short-term complications such as infection or a seroma, which is a fluid collection of lymph, uh, lymphatic tissue. And there's decreased risk of long-term complications such as numbness, pain, and lymphedema, which um, you may have heard of, uh, it's something that people technically uh, have heard of with um, breast cancer. One other benefit that I haven't listed here of a, something being a sentinel lymph node is when you send something called a sentinel lymph node biopsy to the pathologist for testing, they know to automatically look at that lymph node in much closer detail. So that would help us identify um, much smaller areas of metastasis that may have been otherwise uh, missed if had we not done a sentinel lymph node biopsy. Okay, so now the graphic part. Um, if anyone gets queasy or lightheaded, there are several medical providers in the room. Just <laughs> let us know. Okay. So the lymph nodes um, in, all over the body are running along the lymph, uh, all along the blood vessels. So to find them, you have to find the spaces where the blood vessels are and the lymph nodes are, uh, are sitting right on top. So here you can see um, this, this nice little channel that we're moving a little fast in this video. There's a nice little channel going to a glob of tissue here that's lighting up as green. That, that is the sentinel lymph node with the lymphatic channel and the green dye traveling through that channel. So on the left of the screen, you see the, a major blood vessel called the external iliac artery. Um, and on the right, this thing that the, the surgical arm is hitting is the ovary. And so that's where 90% uh, of uh, sentinel lymph nodes for endometrial cancer and gynecologic cancers live in this space. So the, um, we're opening up this space. We're identifying the lymph node. I wish I could speed this up a little bit. Maybe I can. Um, I don't know how. Dr. Winner says I'm running out of time, so we got to skip to the end. Um, okay, so eventually you will, what you will see is that we keep switching before, between the infrared view and the regular view um, to identify the sentinel lymph node, and then subsequently we will dissect out this one lymph node that is the sentinel lymph node and send it to pathology. I want to zoom to the end. Do you need to come out of presentation mode? What oh, if we great. do this? Great, let's do it. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah. And then um, you can like maybe select and then go back into presentation mode, like where you want it. Okay. Yeah. I want to show you just the lymph. Oh, no, come on. All right, whatever. I think you guys get the point. The sentinel lymph node, it's beautiful, it's green. And, um, you know, we offer it to almost all of our patients if they're a candidate, um, and if there's no evidence of lymph node involvement from the get-go. Here, oh yeah, you're gonna see it, it's beautiful. It's artwork. There we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, 
So there are many misconceptions about robotic surgery that, uh, you know, this is based on what patients come to me and tell me um, that they've heard. So one of the main misconceptions is that robotic surgery takes longer than other methods. That's not the case. In high volume centers such as NYU Long Island with high volume surgeons such as all of us here, um, the, with, uh, once we overcome a learning curve, it actually tends to be faster. Um, national data shows that it's actually about the same length of time, but I, I like to think that I'm, you know, faster on the robot. The, another benefit which we've already heard uh, today as well is that we have a standardized robotic team. There's a lot of our robotic team, our nurses, our anesthesiologists, our PAs, um, who help thing, keep things smooth and safe for our patients. We have standardized uh, patient positioning, port placement, and instrument trays, um, which all translates into a smoother surgery, safer, and uh, more effective. Another thing I hear is that it's more expensive than laparoscopy. Um, that's not the case either because um, laparoscopy um, tends to be a longer surgery if they're not as skilled um, or as adept on the robot, um, which time under anesthesia is where the surgery gets expensive. Um, it, compared to laparotomy or open surgery, there's a shorter hospital stay, and that's also where a lot of the cost is incurred. Um, and then also, when compared to laparoscopy, uh, there's a decreased risk of, of conversion to an open um, case, which also decreases the cost. So in conclusion, you deserve specialized care. Uh, here at our hospital, our mission is to secure successful oncologic outcomes and um, uh, survival for our patients while decreasing healing time and risk of complications. It's important to understand all of your options so you can speak to your surgeon and make informed decisions regarding the best care for your particular situation. Thank you very much for your time and attention.